welcome back, Fred in the Shed 1, and another handheld radio review from that company, OlliWiz. It's a company that we're not really familiar with here in the UK, but a very much a new kid on the block. And a few weeks ago, I tested this little single band radio here on the uh, UHF frequency, and it did pretty well. It was uh, a very nicely made radio, um, a little bit bigger than the uh, Bofang AAAS, which it sort of looks like. I'm pretty impressed with that. So today we've got another radio in from uh, OliWiz uh, from the UV series, the UV6S. So what we're going to be doing, we're going to have a closer look at this radio in a minute. We'll go through some of the uh, specs. We'll have a look what you get in the box. Then we'll look at the uh, programming, find out how easy or not this radio is to program. And then finally, I will be doing some testing. But first, let's look at some of the specs from this radio. Right, it's a dual bander, so it's VHF. It tunes from 136 to 174 megahertz. On on the UHF, it tunes from 406 to 470. It has 128 channel memories. The uh, frequency step can be adjusted. There's six adjustments from 2.5 up to 25 kilohertz. It's also a simplex or semi-duplex operation radio. RF power is adjustable. Two settings, one watt and 5 watts and it has a 7.4 volt lithium ion battery which we'll be taking a closer look at in a moment. It's uh, splash proof, it's not waterproof so don't take it diving or in the swimming pool or anything like that. It has a built in uh, FM radio which uh, is supposed to tune from 87 to 108 on the UK broadcast band. The one I got actually it tunes from about 65 I think up to about 79 so I think maybe I've got the Chinese version here. Um, it's got a built-in siren alarm, if you're into that sort of thing. And you've got a three-color display backlight that can be changed. The radio features a Vox function, which allows you to transmit without touching a PTT. It can uh, transmit on both wide and narrow bandwidth, and that is programmable. It has a handy built-in scan feature. Now, the radio also has 40, yeah, you heard me right, 40 features in the uh, menu. Now I won't have time to go through all of those individually but what I will do is I'll just cover those with some pictures in a moment. But uh, as for now let's have a look what we get inside the box. So as I mentioned on the last video it's actually quite nice nowadays to get a box. <laughs> some of these radios come in a sort of blister pack but you get a nice sort of solid uh, box here. Okay so uh, cracking straight into it. And uh, on top, we've got just a little introductory sort of leaflet here, but it's, um, it's quite useful. You've got two 2D uh, barcodes here, which one that takes you straight to Dollywood's website and one that takes you to their Facebook page. If you want to get in contact with them, any problems, that's always a good little shortcut. And then there's the uh, instruction menu itself. And yeah, nicely uh, put together, all in uh, English. Quite easy to sort of uh, understand. Didn't see any uh, spelling mistakes on this one. Of course, as I say, there is quite a lot of um, features in the menu and we'll be having a look at those in just a sec. So moving on to the uh, radios itself. And uh, yeah, quite a nice sort of size. Similar, very similar to sort of the right Bofung type sort of, you know, radios you get that sort of size. Uh, chassis itself, it's uh, silver. I think it's plastic, but it uh, seems very, very nicely put together, very sort of nicely made. And uh, then you've got the, uh, the battery. Now the battery is worth a mention. This is one huge battery, 7.4 volt lithium iron. But uh, it is incredibly wide. It's at least, I'd say, probably twice as wide as you get with the uh, Bofung range of uh, batteries. And, you know, with lithium ion batteries, big is good because that means you can have a lot of stamina and a lot of transmit time and certainly a lot of standby time with this radio. And once you sort of fit it into the uh, radio itself, you can see it's certainly an impressive thickness. I mean, it really does feel something in the hand and uh, very impressed with the size of that battery, actually. So you just got the uh, on-off button there. Um, sort of, quite, it's nice to find an, a, an actual real on-off button. Some of these radios have gone down to uh, sort of push buttons. And uh, right, moving on. Next, uh, next in the box in the uh, bottom section here. Well, we've got all the goodies. Got the uh, chargers, of course, and uh, you've got the uh, the antenna. Now, this is a dual band antenna, of course, and you've got the uh, standard SMA connector. So you're able to uh, change the antenna to your liking. And I always like to try and fit one of the longer antennas on these radios just to see if you can get that extra little bit of uh, range out of it but it's good that you've got the uh, the option there to change the antenna okay let's have a look at the uh, charger so you've got the uh, sort of desktop base charger and uh, this one uses 
a separate little power adapter here and it's really nice to see that it's got a proper molded UK three pin adapter and not one of those deadly Chinese kind of plug-in gray adapters that uh, can sort of sort of kill you so uh, yeah that's all pretty good pretty pleased with that got the uh, little belt belt sort of strap here that uh, will bolt onto the back of the radio and that's sort of got quite a nice sort of metal clip so that looks like that's quite sturdy and it's going to sort of last some time and in here somewhere yep here they are we've got just got a couple of little uh, sort of phillips screws so you can uh, fit that on the radio and finally hidden in the box of course is your lanyard wrist strap what radio would not be complete without one do people use these i find these sort of get in the way myself but it's there if you want it now one thing that is missing from this box which i find very a little bit disappointing for molly Wiz, is there's no usb programming cable once again you know at this price point i think it would be nice if that was included to save you going to source on your own but uh, it's not but we'll come back to that a little later on right let's have a uh, sort of closer look at the radio and you know the first thing i can say once the battery is sort of connected is a sturdy feeling radio it does feel quite premium actually um you know maybe similar to the sort of range of sort of bofung radios that you find at this price point but uh, yeah it certainly is a sort of a nice sort of feeling radio you've got the volume control as i say on the sort of top there and uh, you've got quite a clear kind of LCD display, very uh, similar to the sort of Bofeng UV5R radios like that. Okay, moving on to the right-hand side, we've got, nice to see, a standard Kenport sort of plug socket there, it's attachment, that, that's handy for the programming lead that's not in the box, and also speaker mics and earpieces, things like that. So moving on to the bottom there, you've just got the uh, sort of charging connectors there for the uh, sort of base charger and that rather thick battery you can see sticking out. And on this side of the radio, we've got the uh, the push TT and also you've got the two additional buttons. Uh, the bottom button here is used for breaking the squelch and also turning on and off the torch. And then the top button is the uh, FM radio, which as I say, my one is uh, programmed in the wrong band, unfortunately, so I wasn't able to test that. So on top of the radio here, obviously you've got the uh, sort of on-off on -off switch and the volume that's a quite a nice Feeny and linear pot uh, quite sort of pleased with that and of course the torch function it was missing on the previous radio I'm pleased to see it here some people hate these but uh, I think they're really quite useful especially late at night if you go camping or something like that you'll be surprised when you might want a torch so finally on the front of the radio of course we have a keypad it's always nice to see now it, it is possible to program this radio via the keypad and not through a PC using a connection lead um, to be honest it would be incredibly tedious I've done it on a UV5R but it, it can be done the keypad itself um, rubberized buttons yeah quite a nice sort of tactile feel at this price point absolutely uh, no problem at all now the next test I'm going to do they hate me doing it but I'm going to do the squeeze and twist test just to see if there are any creaks and groans coming out from the case of the radio and please to report no it, it passed absolutely fine um, in fact the radio does feel probably more premium than the price point would suggest but no absolutely fine so overall very pleased with this radio it does feel like it could take the odd drop or two and not fall apart so as i mentioned the menu system is quite intense on this radio there are 40 options and in fact there are five pages in the manual so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to show you some pictures here of the manual if you're really into this sort of thing i suggest that you pause the video so you can sort of study this at your leisure but as i say there is so much in this radio it really is a kind of programmer's dream that is too much to go through in this video in in detail i'd end up doing the whole video just on the uh, program menu but here it is so pause it to your heart's content and uh, read the functions so as i mentioned earlier unfortunately the radio does not come with a usb programming lead but the good news is due to the fact that it's got a kenwood jack on the side there you can use the range of both fung leads and these can be found cheap pretty much on ebay amazon things like that i'd always recommend that you try and source a genuine both fung lead pay maybe a couple of pounds or you know a couple of dollars more to get one because you'll find that these work first time with the uh, radio and what i'll do is i'll leave a link in the description there to the lead that i'm using because this worked absolutely no problem with the OliWiz software so i think it's time now that we uh, had a look at the uh, programming software and find out how easy or maybe not this radio is to program so that's going to be the next part all the programming software for all of the OliWiz radios is found in the support section on their main site and I will leave a link for the main site in the description below. 
Now, all of the uh, software on the Oliwiz site is compressed in a RAW format, so you're going to need some kind of uncompression program to, uh, to view that on your computer. I use WinRAR, which is free uh, for a limited period, and uh, you can find that on the internet. So there's uh, two sections to the uh, files that you've downloaded, and one is a PDF file, which if we open that, it's quite a useful little programming guide. It takes you through step by step how to uh, program the radio, pretty much what I'm going to sort of show you here. And it's quite good they've, in, uh, they've included that, so it's worth a sit down, a cup of coffee, and a bit of a read. Uh, it's kind of interesting that the first thing you come to is it shows you the uh, programming cable that is not supplied. <laughs> so uh, just make sure you get one of those before you uh, start reading the instructions. Right, okay, onto the uh, software itself. So once you've uncompressed that RAW file, I found the installation, you know, absolutely fine. It's pretty much like any other software you install on your computer. I, I'm running Windows 7, 64-bit, and it went in no problem at all. And once it's all gone through, you follow the on-screen instructions, and you end up with just a little sort of pro icon there just in your sort of program menu. And that's it. So now we can open the program itself and have a look at it. It's pretty generic. I think if you've had one of these radios before, you'll be quite used to what you're going to see. Now, what I found mucking about with these type radios is that it's a good time now to plug in the little USB lead there and switch on the radio. And when you do, normally you'll get a little notification come up on the taskbar. Just have a little quick note of that because it tells you what COM port that the radio is going to connect to on your computer. So just make a mental note when that little uh, notification pops up. Now, most of these programs will automatically configure the COM port for you, but this doesn't always work first time. So once you're into the program, the first thing you want to do is go up to where it says communication port selection, and we'll open that. So as we're on COM port 5, we just want to make sure that COM port 5 is ticked. Once I've set the COM port, the first thing I always do is I just read to find out what frequencies are actually programmed into the radios before I delete them. Now, one of the questions I always get when I do these videos is, for Fred, you know, do I have to program the radio? Um, will they work out of the box as a matched pair? And the answer is, yeah, they will work out of the box. They'll be programmed to the same frequencies, but you just don't know what frequencies you're going to get. So I always read the frequencies first. And as you can see here on the screen, now, I don't know what country you're in, whether you're in the US, UK, you know, Canada, China, wherever. I don't know whether these frequencies tie up with any of your emergency services or commercial radios, but you could get yourself in a little bit of bother. Now, just remember, this is a five watt handheld transceiver. So even in a very built up suburban area, you're still going to be transmitting at least a kilometer. And of course, if you're out in the open, it's going to be a lot further. So I always wipe these out. I, I never use the uh, pre-programmed radio frequencies that are in the radios that are supplied. These are generally test frequencies that are used at the factory to test, and I think it's best to get those wiped out straight away. As for programming the radios for itself, for simplicity reasons, I'm trying to keep this video short, I'm just going to program these radios for the 446 PMR band. Now, what I do to get these frequencies is I just go onto Google, put in uh, PMR band 446, and then they come up, and then you can just simply copy and paste them straight into the program. To wipe the radio, you don't have to manually sit there and sort of delete all that stuff. If you just open a new sheet in the programming software, when you write to the radio, it will automatically overwrite the previous uh, program. So what we're going to do here is uh, we're just going to copy the first 446 uh, PMR channel, and I'm just going to paste it into the RX section of the program cell. Next, I'm going to click in the TX section. And now these programs generally work the same. When you click in the TX section, it automatically figures out what you're trying to do and it duplicates the uh, frequency. Obviously, you want the same transmit and uh, receive frequency for PMR use. And then it fills in all of the uh, the other options. Now, I always go through and just check these. Um, check the power if you want high power or low power, wide band or narrow band, things like that. But generally, it gets it right first time. And then finally, I give the channel a name. So I'm just going to call this uh, PMR1, and I'll do the same with the uh, other eight channels. So here you see these are the eight standard PMR channels. Now, if you're going to be using this on the VHF frequency, obviously this is a simplex or semi-duplex radio. So you would put in your uh, repeater, uh, sort of transmit and uh, receive frequencies in the same way as uh, I've done here. I think pretty much if you're using this on the amateur band, you would probably have uh, gone through this before, so I won't go into too much detail there. 
Now, one thing that you probably haven't noticed is that if you look at this, I've actually programmed this from zero to seven in the uh, radio channels. That was a mistake. You need to go from one to eight because the radio does announce each channel as you uh, select it. So obviously one to eight, it's completely out of sync with the uh, PMR band. So that was just a little error on my behalf that I had to correct after I'd made this video. So that's it. We're pretty much ready to program the radio. But before we do that, we're just going to go into the uh, menu option which is called the available function for some reason and uh, we go into there and as you can see there's a variety of options here that we can change uh, the talk talk out timer I'm going to set to maximum set it to English the squelch level I have it down on one so we don't cut out any uh, weak sort of stations and then there's other things you can change also you can change the way that the uh, radio will display the channel presets if you want them to come up as your name or you just want to come up as the frequency things like that and then obviously if you're on the uh, the hand bands on the right hand side you've got loads of other functions that uh, you can play with and it's best to get those uh, right now for the whole all of the channels before you uh, press that program button so when you're happy you can just go ahead and just click right to radio and hopefully you'll see a progress bar appear at the bottom of the uh, screen and I didn't have any problems at all and sometimes with both rung radios things can get a little bit stuttery here and the whole thing can sort of freeze up but with these Oliwiz radios so far touch wood I've had absolutely no problems and it writes to the radio first time 2865, 2865, 1664 call. Charlie Tango, 1664, Charlie Tango, 2865. That's a Roger on you there. Got a Roger copy on you there, Dave. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I hope, uh, I hope you're not too hot, buddy. No, I'm all good. I'm sitting in the garden. Let me set my camera up and I'll do some videoing. Uh, cheers for that. Okay then, so yeah, I'm on the uh, Oliwiz radio, Dave. I'm on the uh, dual, dual channel one here. This is the uh, five watt, five watt transceiver there. Um, parked up in the car, probably about just a fraction under one kilometer from you in a built up area. So uh, how's it coming in? How does the uh, audio sound? Is it nice and loud, Dave, over? Yeah, roger that, mate, roger that, coming through loud and clear. Oh, that's, that's a good one. So, um, what radio are you using, Dave? Over. I'm using a Bellphone, uh, using 5R. Oh, that's a Rog. And uh, what's the output on that? Is that about, uh, it's about two or three watts, isn't it, Dave? Yeah, I think it's a couple of watts. Couple of watts. Okay, that's a Rog. This one's um, supposed to be uh, five watts. I've not tested it, but uh, it's supposed to be sort of about five watts going out. But uh, well, that's making the trip, isn't it? That's, that's not bad. I mean, PMR band is always a difficult one, isn't it? Uh, especially in a built-up area. So, so I'm sitting in the car. Um, so that's not doing. That's not doing too bad. Back to you, Dave. Yeah, Roger that. No, it's not too bad at all. Considering you know I am in a bit of a built-up area myself. That's true. That's true. Okay, then, Dave. Well, thanks for that. Thanks for that uh, radio check. Thanks for giving me the uh, giving me the time. Uh, always appreciate it. And I say, nice to make contact with you on the uh, four four six band, Dave. Yeah, watch that, mate. Watch that. No problem at all. Anyway. So there you go. There. That that concludes the uh, PMR four four six band test. And uh, that was Dave there two eight six five. And so he's just under one uh, kilometre away. And just sitting in his garden there with a uh, Bofong UV5R, which I think is about a uh, two watt radio. So uh, yeah, I was getting him okay. Broke up a little bit on the receive, but that's probably more you know more likely to be the conditions we are surrounded and by houses, as you can sort of see, we're in a built-up area by our main road. But I think that's that's pretty fair, you know. I mean, as I say, PMR band is uh, very very difficult to get distance unless you go up on the high ground. And just sitting in the car here in a built-up area, um, yep. I was sort of more than happy with that. I did try from home as well. We did try in the week, and uh, also I was able to get to uh, Dave's sort of QTH from from my QTH, and we reckon that was uh, over a one kilometre, probably about 1.2 kilometres, something like that. It was a little bit broken up, but we was able to do it. So I think that's a thumbs up on the uh, on the PMR band. Um, I think that's that's absolutely no problem at all. I mean, what a great what a great PMR radio to be able to do sort of you know a 1k in an, in a built up area. So okay, that concludes that bit of testing, and then uh, on to the next bit of testing. Right, so we've got the Ollie Wiz in the garden. I'm going to try and get a uh, audio report on VH. 
And I did try last night and got nothing. I only got the iodine come back. And I don't know why I got the iodine come, come back. So I'm going to try it on uh, VH. Now, I haven't worked out to program this from Chirp yet. So I had to manually program the two in, but that wasn't, that wasn't the problem. So we're just going to switch it on. Frequency. You can see frequency mode there, don't you see it because of the the glare? But here on 433325, which is GB3VH. 2E0 IQJ, 2E0 IQJ, testing an Ollie Whiz radio and uh, looking for an audio report, please. M1CYT phone mobile, good afternoon, you're coming through loud and clear. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Um, just testing this Ollie Whiz radio. So, yeah, your audio is coming through lovely and strong this way. I'm doing a little bit of video and I hope that's okay. I'm just testing the Ollie Whiz radio. So, the audio is sounding clear, is it? Yep, the audio is uh, sounding very, very clear. I am in Hatfield at the moment. Yeah, Roger D. I'm at my home Q QTH. Just sort of pop out. Um, like I said on the radio this morning, I did do a few... Uh, test last night and just got the idents come back from re uh, repeaters but yeah glad it's working all right steve thank you no problem no problem so we're testing the ollie whiz on uh 70 sems i did try on two meters but couldn't get into the two meter repeater at enfield so let's try it on 70 sems frequency low let's try a bucker steel it's about 15 miles away 2E0 IQJ, mobile, listening GB3OY. Can somebody give me an audio report, please? I'm testing an Ollie Whiz radio. It's got in. Let's try one more time. 2E0 IQJ, testing the Ollie Whiz radio. Uh, looking for an audio report, please. Over. Well, it's getting into row one, no problems. But we're not... Yeah, 2 e zero station, uh, M6 OXJ. Uh, 5 and 9 on mobile. Um, hey, not here, I'll back to you. Yeah, thank you very much for that. Um, just testing an Ollie Whiz uh, 2 and semi handheld. Yeah, no problem. Um, yeah, absolutely clear as a bell, actually. Okay, um, I'm out of the M6 OXJ, standing by. Yeah, 73s, this is 2E0 IQJ, going Q QRT. Thank you for your audio report, have a good evening. Yeah, you too, 73. Well, I was going to say, no one returned, but someone did return on the uh, repeater. That's Bucko still about 15 miles away. So, I'd just like to thank Jez there for his help with the testing on the VHF band. Uh, incidentally, Jez will be making his own review of this Ollie Whiz radio and that will be appearing on his YouTube channel um, probably a couple of days after my video goes up. What I shall do is I will leave a link to Jez's YouTube channel down there in the uh, description if you want to go and uh, check out Jez's reviews. Right, okay, so just the uh, last sort of conclusion bit. At the at the end, and yeah, yeah, overall been very impressed with this radio. The build con build construction, the quality, the way the radio feels, everything's quite nice and tactile. And in those uh, that testing, you know, absolutely fine. Just getting out there, 15 miles was uh, perfectly great. Um, of course, you know, th th these radios are going to be sort of compared to compared to both phones. The sort of layout is very very similar with the keyboard there, and also you know things like the sort of flashlight. And then when you get into the menu system on these, if you own a both phone radio, it's not entirely exactly the same, but you'll feel right at home sort of straight away. You shouldn't have any difficulties there. Um, you know, between the sort of two brands of radio, I think one thing Ollie Whiz might have in its favour is this extra large sort of size lithium iron battery. Now, I haven't got a similar 5 watt transceiver to do sort of tests on, but you know, intuition tells me that uh, if you have got a sort of a larger heavy battery, that should give you a sort of longer sort of run time there on the uh, radio. Um, that might be a kind of sort of a selling feature you might be interested in if maybe you're running a business for example and you want to sort of keep in communication with your staff and you're looking for a radio that will last the whole day well there you go this one you know with the extra large battery might be uh, might be something that uh, you're interested in um, also finally I mean I always I haven't been on the market all that long in uh, July 2018 when I'm making this video I've not seen any of these videos uh, 
sorry, any of these radios being uh, counterfeited um, or sort of knocked, knocked, knocked off. Unfortunately, other makes, you know, have been a kind of victim of their own success. When you go on eBay nowadays, you have to be really, really careful that you're going to buy the genuine item. You're not going to get a cheaper counterfeit. And obviously, you know, they tend to turn up um, in sort of blister packs and jiffy bags with everything sort of thrown in. And I think I've been caught at least once myself. Um, again, in Ollie Wiz's favour, you know, everything is supplied in a rather nice sort of neat cardboard box, which I say is quite, you know, expensive to counterfeit that in itself. And uh, very nicely sort of printed instructions. So that might be uh, important to you to sort of know you're getting the uh, right genuine item. So there you go. I think that just sort of about come, brings it to an end. There will be some uh, links in the description. I will leave you links to uh, how you can buy this radio uh, in the UK and also other places. And I'll also link in Ollie Wizzy's sort of main website, which you might want to go on there and have a look at some of our other radios. They do, do other stuff uh, as well. Finally, um, I'd like to say thank you for staying with the video this long. You know, your views always very, very, very welcome to me. I'm only a very small channel. Uh, I don't get really sort of many views. So everyone who views is, is appreciated. And what I'll do is I'll leave the usual kind of sort of little pop-ups there that come around the screen, links to other videos that I've made. Um, and including, I did put one in as well, I, I did make another video on a cheaper Hollywood radio. A radio that was about half the price of this one, just a single band radio without the display. But I say it was, uh, it was about half the price, so you might be interested in uh, checking that out. So that'll pop up just at the end. But as for now, as always, cheers. Thanks for watching. Stay safe in all this heat. And of course, I'll catch you all on the next one.